get Windows 2012 server so that you can install it as a uh, either a server so this is going to serve as your com serve your media agent and also your your client uh, Windows client right the other thing is uh, it's going to serve for is your Active Directory domain controller um, so first things first type in your favorite browser Google A or Google go down to oh rather sorry Microsoft 2012 server right and uh, when you do that it's going to pull up a bunch of things and the one I chose was the microsoft.com slash this deal here is what I chose right here uh, and then just open that up okay here's the site right here cool thing about this is evaluation center if you ever or just google microsoft evaluation center if you desire it has pretty much everything right so you have your windows 2016 server your hyper v the admin center so we're just going to use this guy here the windows server 2012 you click on iso and you continue you press continue and of course you know you you need to log in uh, have a uh, an account just create an account hotmail or whatever whatever it is right msn.com or hotmail.com account so that you can download it the iso file um, and that's going to serve you well and you get 180 days that means from the time you download it uh, rather from the time that you install it you just have 180 days until it expires right but you can just install it again and it'll work so it's not a big deal with that the only drawback is that you don't have the up-to-date features like 2016 does um, yeah 2012 so we're, we're gonna download 2012 um, once that's downloaded put it on your we're gonna go to our um, our data store and then upload it there so we're at our ESXi host Mine is, of course, posted by Joe's Data Center, joesdatacenter.com. Um, anyway, so click on Storage and click on uh, Data Store 1, Data Store Browser. And we, I've actually already put it in here, right? So here it is right here. It's um, this guy, I believe. Let me see. Oh, it's this one right here. Yeah, it's this server. It's This is the image right here, the ISO file. So that's what it is right there. So once you have that, you're ready to actually install a, um, you're actually ready to stand up your own instance of Active Directory. But of course, before we stand up the Active Directory, we need to actually install Windows itself, the actual Windows OS server 2012. So let's do that. So we're at where, we're at the es host. We're going to create a new, we're going to create a new VM actually, really. So click on um, yeah what is okay so create register VM click on that then we're gonna do create new virtual machine then we are gonna name our virtual machine we're gonna name our server Windows Active 12 meaning Windows Active Directory 12 15 characters is usually what um, I've always done 15 characters for instance your first three digits can be let's just let's just break it down real quick here so here's how the naming convention works, right? So let's say, for instance, we're in Dallas, right? So we're going to do, um, okay, here we go. We're in Dallas. So our server is a Windows server, right? Um, okay, so Windows server, it is, so that's a Windows server. So let's do like this, win SRVR, okay. So then what type of server is this Active Directory? Tiv Directory. Okay, so we're gonna put W R S W I N S R V R. So it's an Active Directory server, A D, right? And then um, it's in Dallas. We notice it's in Dallas. Right? So we'll go uh, Dallas, right? And then um, so what are we at here? We're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's how we get our 15 characters. And you could use this for any server, really, actually, the, you know, whatever you're at. So let's say it's a Windows server. 
and it is let's go to real estate here it's a Windows server and it's a SharePoint server so SP uh, and then let's say it's not in Dallas it's in um, Chicago SHI right okay zero zero one this is um, this is good naming practice by the way 15 yeah 15 characters to use um, for your server so you know um, think think of it like this how you name your server tells people oh where it's at um, if you have a thousand servers and you don't name your server like okay Windows server okay got it I know that's a Windows server right okay SP okay uh, SharePoint okay so what you'll have is you'll have like a little uh, cheat sheet right for everybody so it'll say okay SP means you know SharePoint uh, AD means Active Directory and then the, in your little um, almost like airport codes right I guess you could ORD I think is the airport code for Chicago but you could do shy as well um, so that also oh, SharePoint, Shy, Chicago, and then zero zero one. You want to fill it in fifteen characters. I, I've, you know, I see I see some places they have like twelve characters. It'll be like, um, I mean, this is an example, right? I've actually seen customers where they actually, you know, put their server names like this. Like, how do I? I've no idea what that means. PR. What does that mean? I've no idea. Who can just you know that's it's like code, it's like you know cryptographic code here. I don't know. Make it simple, make it real simple for people to understand, and name it across the board like these. This is very simple. You can go in and you can anybody can edit it. I'm not edit it, but anybody. Can, oh, okay, I know. Oh, that's Dallas. Oh, that's Chicago, New York City, NYC. Too easy, right? I mean, getting the practice of this. I know this is like a lab and development environment, but. Getting the practice practice of doing this um, in your in your home lab and how you actually name your your devices. That way, when you get in the real world and you're a and you have influence and you can make changes like this, you can say, "Oh no, well, this is the way that I learn, you know, the best." Or this is the way that we should um, we want to name our host names for every server. That way, we know where it's at and we can. Oh, okay, boom, boom, boom. For this particular instance, we're just going to name ours Win Active 12, Windows Active 12, because you know we're just doing a, a test here, right? So I'm going to just show you how to install it and all that. So, uh, create a new virtual machine, and we're going to name it Windows 12 Active 12. So it's a Windows server, and it is a look at all these nice ones. You can I mean these are what what this means is. Anytime you choose these, that will tell the ESXi host, okay, typically these Windows boxes have 4 gig or 2 gig or 20 gig hard drive. That's all it is. That's the whole reason behind this, by the way. Um, that's the reason why you, you name them or they, it, let, it gives you a drop down, right, to give the ESXi host some sort of like predetermined template to go off of. Since ours is a... What are we at? 2012, 64 bit. Yeah, so we're going to use 24 uh, Windows Server 2012, 64 bit. We're going to click next. Go choose our data store. Next. Yeah, well, Windows does use a lot of memory, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do. We're going to give it um, 1024 gig of RAM. Okay, here's the important part, right? I know I mentioned this earlier with the Ubuntu one. Same thing here applies. Thin provision. Thin provision means I have a can of water. It's just a can, a can, a cup rather, right? A cup of, just a cup. I have 40 gig worth of cup of whatever, right? It's just a cup. What I do is when I install the OS, it's going to fill in, I don't know, it's like 2 gig or something like that, right? So what happens is the amount of space you use is only 2 gig. That's it. That's all it is. That's what that means, thin provision. Let me, you know, basically, hey, give me a can, a, a large bottle, right? But I'm only going to put like two gig in there. Just, just, just give me that much, though. Give me like 40 gig worth so I can put two gig in. I may use more, but I don't know. Just give me, you know, let me get it. So thick provision, 
uh, lazily zeroed and eagerly zeroed. So lazily zeroed is like you thick provision, you have 40 gig, right? But if it's in a data store or a larger container to say um, you're going to give this hard drive 40 gig. But that 40 gig may not be in the same space. And you can imagine a candy bar, right? So 40 and 40 gig, or let's say the candy bar is 100 gig from left to right. That's a, that represents 100 gig. But you're only getting 40 gig. So lazily zeroed means um, 40 gig. So you're going to have, you're going to own that 40 gig. That's going to dedicate 40 gig to you. Not like the thin provision where you just use what you want. Thick provision, lazily zeroed says, okay, it's uh, a ch it's a candy bar. I'm going to break it up if needed, and you're going to get different pieces of it, right? But you're still going to get your 40 gig, right? That's lazily zeroed, meaning your data can be anywhere in there, but you're still going to get your 40 gig. Now, eagerly zeroed means you have the same candy bar, but your 40 gig is either going to be in the front or the back. But it's going to be contiguous. Contiguous, it's going to be together. Your 40 gig is going to be uh, together. And you're going to get that 40 gig 100%. So the problem with thick provision in VMware is if your data store is a terabyte and you have, say, 10, 10 VMs and each VM is 200 gig, you can imagine, right? So what is that? Okay, so each 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 hard drive you provision is two ter two hundred gig, and you have one terabyte data store. If you thick provision it, even lazy zeroed or eagerly zeroed, you're going to use two terabyte. You can't you can't do that. It's going to be too much. So the idea is to use thin provisioning to where now you can have a one terabyte hard uh, data store, and you can have up to 20 whatever how many however many vms you need those same what what did i say 20 vms i think i said or 10 vms whatever those send 10 vms with 200 gig each one of those vms may only consume 20 gig so you're looking at what 400 gig max you know 20 times what did i say 20 times 20 four yeah 400 gig right yeah 400 gig is still a lot less than um a lot less than a terabyte. So we're going to actually choose the um, CD-ROM. So we're going to choose our our um, what do you call it? Our Windows 12 2012 server. We're going to choose that. Make sure it's good. Connected. Yep. Good. Okay. Next. And this is a summary tab saying, okay, this is what you're doing. Uh, this is all the nice little cool stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Good, finish, grade it. Okay, so it's now here. So uh, I wanted to show you something about, like for instance, like all the VMs I have here. I have a lot. And there's a lot of VMs. So I think I have a 500 gig hard drive, something like that, maybe. Let me see here, what do I have? Oh, I have a terabyte. So I have a terabyte of gig, I have a terabyte gig hard drive, meaning it takes some uh, gig to provision it, right? So, um, meaning I provision, meaning I'm using 281 gig and I have 642 gig free. But my some of my VMs are like 100 gig, right? But it's only using, you know, like for instance, my Active Directory server that I have here, I think that's set to like 100 gig, but it's only using 47 gig. That's the whole benefit of thin provisioning. At any rate, uh, let's start up our Windows Active Active Directory Server 12. We're going to Windows VM. So when, there's two parts to this. There's the Active Directory portion, and it's also just setting up a, an actual um, server, right? So we're going to just set up the server, and then the next video is going to be about uh, setting up the Active Directory. So, so right-click on it, and we'll go um, Power Up, Power On. Yeah. So you can either do right click console open um, browser console you can do open a new window uh, launch remote console uh, but that for, if you do this one you have to download this uh, VMRC which means you have to go to VMware's website and then log in and download their stuff we're just doing the open 
uh, browser console. So this is this is nice. So this is this is Windows 2012. So if you've never installed it, this is uh, how you install it. So we're going to click on so everything here, language, so whatever, wherever you're at. Let's say you're well, you can't really choose. I guess you can't choose. I guess you can't change other than your time and format. Um, okay, so we're going to push next. Let me make this. Maybe I can make this a little bigger. Okay, there we go. So we're going to install it. Okay, a couple different considerations to understand here, right? When you have the core, server core installation, that's the first one chosen, right? I've never done that. I do know what it is. It's basically command line installation. I have not done one. I do have patience for it, but I have yet to do it, right? So we're not going to do that. That just takes too long, and I have to a lot of learning. I have to learn a lot to do it, so we're not doing that. Um, if you want to do it, feel free. But for me, you know, I'm not doing it. For this tutorial, we're just doing this. So we're doing the GUI one, the simple easy button one, right? Everybody loves easy. So uh, we're doing the Windows 2012 Standard Edition server with GUI. So you have the data center version uh, with GUI. We're just doing a standard. And um, so next. Uh, do you agree to Microsoft's license? Of course we do. Why would we not? Uh, we're doing a custom install. Um, upgrade would mean like I'm upgrading from 2008 to 2012. We're just doing a custom up. We're doing a install, fresh install. So we're going to do custom. And now here, here it is right here. So say let's say you have two hard drives, right? And um, here's where you can actually format them if you so desire. You can format them. There it has space on it. You want to. You're using um, a hard drive that already has an OS from another build let's say well here's where you you click on it and you can format it or um, delete it right so we're just gonna we're gonna click on it because only one we're gonna push next it's gonna load it by the way and um, after this I mean this is this is it really right here this is how easy it is really that's it after this there is a login where you um, like it reboots and then it says, uh, please enter your password for the administrator or whatever. And that's it. But we'll, I'll, I'll show you that, of course. But uh, let's go ahead and let it just do its stuff. We'll come back after this is uh, done. Well, that was quick. So after reboot, um, it prompted us for this. It's very cool, actually, about uh, about Windows. It's very simple when you uh, download it. Okay. Gonna put the password in. You choose this, by the way, and the default username is always administrator. It's always going to be that, right? Um, so after we're done doing this, we'll just push finish, and then it's going to log us in. So here we go. Now we're able to log into the the box. So let's do that. Okay, so I just, I just do always do, um, I'll just do yes. I mean, it's closed network, so no worries for that. What that means is um, your computer, you want it to, like, see all the other networks. Um, so basically, if this is on a router, right, and you had other servers on that router, they could see each other in a roundabout way. It's not always... it's not exactly like that but it's something similar to that not a, it's not necessarily an auto discovery it doesn't work that way but uh, you know um, if you're on a if you're on a network at like I don't know at the hotel or something uh, shared Wi-Fi you definitely would click no on that for that one yeah definitely anyway um, so we're logged in and um, so this concludes this tutorial on just how to get it and how to install it meaning how to get server 2012 and how to install server 2012. If you like this video and you want to see more, please jump on to my course, which is, I have two courses. One is at get 
a job in it.teachable.com and the other course is on Udemy. It's learn backup and restore with Commvault get a high paying job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications? Thank you very much.